Welcome back to our journey, as we'll call it. Uh, we've been doing this since early July or late June, uh, going over every single team for the 2024 fantasy football season. Quick PSA, this is recorded on August 19th, so I think you're watching this on like the 24th or something, if I'm doing my math right. And you know, if there's some kind of injury that happens there, that's why we don't talk about it. Everything you see, the numbers, half PPR, ADP, half PPR. So, um, Dad, we're talking about the Eagles. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I just, you know, so we've seen the Eagles have a pretty epic collapse at the end of the year last year. And, um, and you know, it's just like they were so good for about two-thirds of the year. And then, you know, the last third of the year or so, last quarter of the year, they just just fell apart, looked like completely different. Then we hear in the off season, you know, you know, a little bit of blame game and, Everybody, you know, Jalen Hurts is Jalen Hurts was hurt, and 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 you know the defense sucks, and, and you know are they going to get rid of the coach? You know, then they get Saquon, which is good, but then then there was a little bit more of a blame game um, about a week ago that you know Jalen Hurts and doesn't get along with the coach or something like that. A lot of uh. A lot of garbage. I mean, there's some good fantasy football players here, and it'll it'll be what I'm trying to say is just all that off season chatter and everything else, and you know it'll be interesting to see how the Eagles bounce back. They got some good players. Hopefully, you know they new offense and defensive coordinators and and stuff like that. So two years ago they went to the Super Bowl. Last year they looked like they were headed in that same direction, and all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. They just fell apart, man. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. Yeah, for sure. Um, I do think Nick Sirianni has a very, very short – if this team starts off one in four, like three or something, like Sirianni could be gone. Like especially considering who they brought in with, um, you know, Vic Fangio um, for the defensive coordinator. Yeah. Uh, Kellen Moore is the offensive coordinator. Like, Fangio could easily step in and, and be the coach, interim coach for this team. And I don't understand um, Kellen Moore. He the guy gets talked about, you know, how wonderful he was in Dallas. And they got rid of him. Oh, he's going to the Chargers. He's going to help Justin Herbert do that. They sucked last year, you know. And um, well, Herbert was hurt, but so I don't understand how, how this guy is so great. And he should be a head coach and all that other stuff. Yeah, kind of. Kind of fake news, if you ask me, about Kellen Moore. But anyway, for, that's not, that's not for fantasy. fantasy. Well, for fantasy guys, I actually think he's pretty good. I agree, he's a little overrated as an offensive coordinator. Yeah, you know, he leaves Dallas, they get rid of him, and their offense is better. By the way, Dallas's yeah. offense. Um, by the way, Eagles week five bye. So they start off Packers, Falcons, Saints, Bucks. Um, they go one and three there. They head into the bye one and three. Just look out for Sirianni canned in uh, week five during their bye. So, um, yeah, but, and you know they're going to blame um, uh, what's his face retiring the center uh, Kelsey uh, Jason Kelsey. Kelsey. Yeah. Oh, Jason Kelsey ain't there. Blah blah blah. Well, the guy who took over was playing. He played right guard for two or three years. So yeah. he, he's not a big. He's not a bum himself, you know. So. Um, but anyway, it'll, it'll be a more blind game yeah. type stuff. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy to fire Sirianni. It's like they just made the Super Bowl two years ago. They did the same thing to Doug Peterson, you know, like yeah, they he did. won the Super Bowl. And he, he won the gone. Super Bowl, and um, and they said, adios, dude, you're out of here. Yeah. yeah, for fantasy stuff, their offense was very vanilla. No motions or anything. They weren't doing any of this, you know, pre-snap motion type of stuff, so – Jalen Hurts is still the guy here. I, he, I think he was hurt last year as well. Uh, no pun intended there, but I do think he was a little beat up, uh, which is, it makes me wonder if they limit how much they're shoving him into a, a pile um, each season. He's 26 years old. He's been a uh, top five quarterback. Uh, it says last year, 25th overall. That's wrong. I just um, I didn't either change from the previous guy or – or not, but he was second. He was second QB2 last year. So he's QB6, QB1, QB2. That's what he's been the last three years. He's fantasy gold. 
He's going to rush for touchdowns. He's going to run for 600, 700 yards. I think he's going to throw it more with, with Kellen Moore there. Um, he's going in round three as the QB three. If you're going to take a quarterback this high, please take a rushing guy. Uh, just be careful with the non-rushing guys unless it's Mahomes. But even Mahomes, we saw last year, have like he lost people leagues because he was like QB 10 in points per game, and you drafted him as QB1. Draft Josh Allen, draft Lamar, Jalen Hurts, you know, don't draft Burrow and CJ Stroud that high. Draft the rushing guys because they're much safer for fantasy. Um, I think Hertz is going to be good again. He has good weapons. He's still going to, they're still going to do the tush push. It didn't get outlawed. I know people are speculating. Can they do it without Kelsey? Yeah, I think they can. I think they can do it without Kelsey. So um, I, I think he's going to be really good. Is he going to have 15 rushing touchdowns? No, but, um, you know, he, he's still going to be really good. Anything you want to add to? Jalen Hurts. No, you kind of laid it out there, and um, you know, uh, yeah, he he threw the ball 538 times. I mean, that's uh, that's a lot of passes. So, I mean, that's right up there with Dak and you know, Jared Goff threw 600. But anyway, so um, 157 carries. Wow, he, yeah. he had some impressive numbers i'd be beat up too you know so yeah for sure for sure double digit touchdowns and rushing three straight years so and i think 2021 they weren't even doing the tush push so um no just keeping that in mind he's still going to have a lot of touchdown opportunities you mentioned it saquon is on this team um you know he doesn't look like saquon of the you know rookie year saquon had the ACL injury, ankle injuries, but he's still been top 10 the last two years, top five in 2022, still only 27 years old, 27 years old. He's going in the end of round one in a half PPR. I'm fine with it. I think Saquon could have a massive year this year. Um, I know they don't pass to um, running backs as much. Is that more of the system? Maybe. I know Jalen Hurts is going to steal some rushing touchdowns, but don't forget, um, Miles Sanders in 2022 rushed for 11 touchdowns, even when Jalen Hurts ran for rushed for 13 as well. Like it was just DeAndre Swift was just falling down at the one yard line like five times last year, and they just gave it to Hurts. But <laughs> My Miles Sanders averaged five yards a carry behind this Eagles offensive line and this Eagles system, and then he went to um, and then he went to Carolina yeah, and um, had 3.3 yards. Yeah. And sucked. You know, DeAndre Swift averaged 4.6 yards of carry last year behind this offensive line. Saquon Barkley was everything to the Giants. He was all they had, especially last year. And, um, you know, I think that takes a lot of stress off of his shoulders. And I think he's just going to be really good. I, I, I could see he's in my short list of guys that I would put money on to win Offensive Player of the Year. I think they could have like McCaffrey like usage here. So. Um, are you fine with Saquon at the end of round one? Would you take him like versus Jonathan Taylor versus Gibbs? Where would you put those? Yeah, I guys? think um, I, I'd, I'd put him behind Taylor and um, I'm kind of a homer on Gibbs, you know, of course. So, but all three of those guys right in, right in the same area, you know, it's, it's hard to really say. And he's going to get usage. They're going to give the ball to him. The, the, you know, like last year he caught 41 passes. I And that's kind of his lowest number that, you know, other than an injury year. So I hope Philadelphia uses them in the passing game. You know, not, you know, like I said, now we're on the third offensive coordinator, you know, the Super Bowl year, then last year, now we got Kellen Moore. So there, there should be – there should be some passing uh, to the running backs and and stuff like that. He got four touchdowns out of it. Saquon did. So I just mm -hmm. hope that happens. That's the only thing that kind of concerns me, you know. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. And the Eagles have notoriously been very low on targets to running backs, and and th part of the reason that is is because they run an RPO system run pass option and if you decide to pass it on a run pass option the running back it's impossible for the running back to catch that pass because he's supposed to be receiving the handoff so they run like 25 percent of their plays as rpos 
Um, but you just look at like Austin Eckler last year, you know, in this Kellen Moore system caught 50 passes in 14 games, right? Tony Pollard, when Kellen Moore was there, was catching 40, 40 passes or something. I do think he gets 40, 50 catches this year. I think they're going to throw it more. Um, I think he's just going to be really good overall. I, I just think he's going to be awesome. So I'm totally fine with him going in round one. Uh, we mentioned it with the Jets that they're one of a few teams that have potentially two guys going in the first round. Uh, Philly's one of those other teams, which is a little, you know, AJ Brown's going uh, ninth overall, um, round one, um, wide receiver six. And one of my drafts, I kind of not even realizing it took both Saquon and AJ Brown, which you normally stay away from taking two players on the same offensive system, but. This is a situation where if you want to, I don't mind it. And A.J. Brown's awesome. You look at the numbers there. Um, he had his best year last year, 17 points per game. Really did fall off. He, his fall off kind of went in hand in hand with when the Eagles started to uh, started to, to suck. But the guy's put up back-to-back -back almost 1,500-yard seasons. Um, I think he's going to be really damn good, and I'm fine with him. He He – I always talk about the elite eight and I don't include AJ Brown. I probably should include AJ Brown and make it like an elite nine. So um, any, anything you want to add to AJ Brown? No, I think um, I, I, you know, I'm same, same thoughts, you know, and the guys produced, he's been paid in a contract and, you know, so um, there's nothing, nothing holding them back, you know, um, you know, no raunchy quarterback or anything like that you know, good offensively, um, the team. So, you know, A.J. Brown should have – should put up those big numbers again. Yeah. Yep. He was on a pace for a massive, massive year, and he really did fall off. Um, it was kind of like him and, like, Diggs were, like, the two big fall off. But don't forget, A.J. Brown had um, one, two, three, four, five, six straight games of, of 130 yards or more. So – and then he just, yeah, really fell off. Those first eight weeks of the season, he had 939 yards, 60 catches, and five touchdowns. So he was on pace for a C.D. Lamb-like season, 120 catches, 1,800 yards, 10 touchdowns, and then, yeah, really, really did fall off there. But I also think he was a little beat up, which he does get beat up quite a bit for a big guy. Um, Devontae Smith is the other guy, you know, the Robin to the Batman. I'm always a little hesitant taking these wide, these clear-cut wide receiver twos um, early <clears throat> in drafts, you know, T. Higgins and and Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell. But, you know, they're good players. We saw, as you see there, you know, Devontae Smith has been top 20 in basically the last two years, even with A.J. Brown there, and not passing it as much. Now you're getting him as wide receiver 23 in the late fourth round, 4-5 four, turn. I think it's – he's almost guaranteed to at least give you top 24, which is where he's being drafted with the potential of being top 15. I think Devonte Smith can kind of play more of that Keenan Allen role in the Kellen Moore offense, moving around a lot in the slot on the outside. I think he's going to be the one that benefits maybe the most from, from the Kellen Moore system. So I I'm kind of in on Devonte Smith this year. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I got a little hesitant, you know, um, in his first couple of years. And um, first off, I thought the guy was too small and he's going to just get killed. And, you know, the NFL, you know, the Slim Reaper type thing. And then A.J. Brown came in and it's like, how, how are they going to get him all these pass? This guy's produced. Um, so, you know, that – those thoughts were just kind of me overthinking situations and stuff like that. This guy, this guy's money. I, I like, I like, uh, I like him. Yeah. He, he's just one of those guys where you see where he's going. And it's like, I just cannot see him not finishing top 24 this year. So like you're literally getting him at his floor with the upside kind of not through the roof necessarily because AJ Brown's there, but Upside of a top 15 or even top 12 guy, low end wide receiver one guy. So I, I like targeting players like that. You know, you just kind of think about the range in which he's going. You know, it's guys like like DJ Moore. I think, you know, there's some concern there with target share. 
Amari Cooper, we don't know with Deshaun Watson, things like that. You know, Malik Neighbors is a rookie. So there's a little bit more of like a floor case for those guys. Yeah, I think Devontae Smith's going to be awesome. Um, and I think, yeah, you're just you're, you're getting him at a little bit of a discount here, which I'm I'm kind of in on. Um, you see the numbers, 80. If he doesn't put up 80 catches and 1,100 yards and, and seven touchdowns this coming year, I'd be very surprised. That's like, again, his floor if he's healthy. There's really no one else in the wide receiver room to talk about. I think Paris Campbell, you know, people used to love Paris Campbell. Um, he, I think he's going to be their wide receiver three um, for this team. Um, but you'd never really hear about the Eagles wide receiver three. Johnny Wilson and Anaya Smith are a couple of uh, rookies. Uh, John Ross is on the team, but already hurt. Can't believe John Ross is on the team. Um, so not, nothing to talk about there. Um, the only other guy is Dallas Goddard, who I think is being severely underrated this year. He's going in the ninth round, the end of the ninth round. Um, so he's going at that 9-10 turn as the tight end 12. Um, you see the numbers. He's been essentially a top 12 guy three straight years. Ninth in points per game, fifth in points per game, 13th last year. Um, Dallas Goddard is... Again, I think he's very, very undervalued here. The guy caught 60 passes and 600 yards in 14 games. You know, 830 yards two years ago, 700 yards in 2022, 600 yards this year. I just think he's going to put up another, like, 60 to 70 catch, 800-yard season. So I'm kind of in on, on Dallas Goddard here. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I – he kind of gets ignored a little bit, I think. And, um, you know, we've had previous discussions and videos and, um, and podcasts talking about tight ends and, and stuff like that. And this guy, you know, he's not an upper echelon tight end, but he's definitely not a slouch. And, you know, if he should, if we get him in the, uh, the 60 catch range, you know, 600 yards and so, and be nice to get five, six touchdowns out of them. That, that would be really good. So, yeah. And he's capable of it. The Eagles use them, you know, hurts, hurts trust, you know, trust them and everything else. He's a good pass catcher. So, yeah. Definitely, um, definitely uh, one of the one of the middle to upper echelon. I'm sorry, tight ends. Yeah, yeah. Again, you, you, you kind of just look at it. Last year, um, 14 games, 17 game pace of of 72 catches, and um, and 840 yards. Yeah, and four touchdowns. Like that's that's tight end eight numbers. I, I guarantee you. Like, not a lot of tight ends are getting over eight hundred yards and, and seventy five catches. Like, they're just not. You know. Um, and I think the Eagles are going to throw throw the ball more. You know, even if it's five to seven times more per game, that's another catch I think for Dallas Goddard per game. So, yeah, I think um, I'm excited about Goddard. I, actually, funny enough, even though the Eagles are. You know, we know they're one of the better teams, and I think all their guys are kind of like where they should be going or value. Say Jalen Hurts, you know, round three for Jalen Hurts could be QB one. Okay, like I'm I'm good with that. AJ Brown's going where he should be. Saquon's going where he should be. Devontae Smith's a value. Goddard's a value. Like I I might have a lot of Eagles on my team uh, teams this year. So um, I think they're all kind of appropriately priced or undervalued, which is that's always what I look for. I don't like to overpay for guys. Um, but that's it. That is it for the Eagles. I believe we have six teams left. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers are up next. Um, so looking forward to that. And uh, anything else on the Eagles? Um, no, there's some good, there's some really good fantasy players there. And, um, you know, you're looking for guys who produce and score you points and stuff like that. And there's definitely, uh, there's at least five guys I count that I wouldn't ignore. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So, yes, we'll be back with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the other um, Pennsylvania team. 
and uh, we will catch you all in that video.